Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Bro, Trossard, mm. Trossard, bro. Like, you know what I like about him? Like, mm. anytime he's coming on, he's like giving his, he's already in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand me? Like, anytime I see him play, he's already in the game. So many players need like one touch, two touch, three touch, maybe like to, to fuck up two, ta- two actions or like that, or make a simple passing. Bro, he's coming in, dribbling a guy, making a challenge immediately. Yeah, 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 this guy is in the zone straight away. He yeah, doesn't bro. need a warm up. Welcome, guys, to Play to Play Play podcast. My name is Ahmed, and we have. And my name is Patrick Bergman. And the topic of today's discussion is the bad decisions that affected our futures in football. But I would say, um, the bad decisions that I made was relying on one asset in my game if that makes sense um so for example i'd go all in just working on my physical capabilities but i was not working on the technical abilities when i was younger that's not because i didn't want to just because i thought at the time i was dead athletic dead physical i was tall in my year group um so everything seems slow mo for me. So I was thinking I'm quick, I'm fit, I don't need to work on other things. Um but because I didn't have that technical foundation, I every everyone caught up as I got older. Then everyone started to get be quick, everyone started to be fit, everyone started to be then I was like, all oh, right, I need to kind of work on my technical abilities. Um how about you, Patrick? Yes, yeah, so I would say that the decisions that you made before twelve years old, I would I would put it at twelve years old, like the 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 target. Any this bad decision that you made before that, it shouldn't be judged. But it's not mm. up to you if you made made any mistake, because you're clearly mm. not not aware of the surroundings around you. But uh, mm. I think the 12, uh, 12 years old, I think that's the age gap that uh, you should start understanding a bit what's around you. And uh, I think the first mistake that I, I did when I was uh, like around 12, it was that I uh, I was not asking for advice. So mm. I was I was the guy that I was t- thinking that I'm the best, uh, the best 12 year old on the planet. And I don't mm. need to get any advice. So I was like uh, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, talent without working hard mm. so uh, anytime somebody wanted to give me some good advice like uh, work on your push-ups or uh, you need to play also to teammates or like you mm. you cannot cry after the games you cannot cry after the trainings you cannot uh, kick your, your opponents bro i was not listening mm. i was like who the mm. fuck are you are you a professional football player no so shut up Mm. So like uh, yeah, I had a big ego as a kid, and if I could take it away, I would, I would, uh, I would definitely do that. What's the one thing that people used to give advice? Um, for example, back in the day, but now is not um a statement that is floating around and coaching all kids. I've got one in my brain. Um. I don't know about you, Patrick. But back in the day, people were saying make double on your weaknesses, don't work on your weaknesses, blah blah blah. But over time, coaches have stopped saying that now because they realize you don't need everything in the game. If that makes sense. Mm. So back in the day, they'd be like, "Oh yeah, work on the left foot, work on this, making sure you can do Travella outside the boot with your left foot." The same thing on your right foot, be able to do both feet, did it, which is great, of course. But do you really need to do ball mastery, this and that, when you're a centre back? Not really, no. Do you know what I mean? Do you really need to be working on um shooting across goal, blah, 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 when you're, for example, let's say a centre back or whatever? Not really, it's more of a striker, Joe. Um, 
So I always say to people, make sure you're average and, and everything. So you can control with both feet, blah, blah, blah. The basics, get, you have to be above average on the basics. And then the ones that matter and makes you stand out, the X factor, I call it. You should have one, two X factor in the game that is like a nine out of 10 and makes you stand out as an asset that a team can have that no one else in the team has, but only you do, that can change the game at a particular phase of play. So that's what I've noticed that changed and adapted from terms of advice that I'd get now compared to the advice I'd get 15 years ago. So um, what about you, Patrick? Have you noticed anything in adaptation in terms of advice? I would say, like, for me, the, the best uh, way to develop your game is to play as much as possible. Mm. And, like, uh, it's not... Uh, I think now it's not... I will, I will actually reverse what you said. So I will say that uh, it's not common now to encourage kids to play as much as possible. Like, I think kids played more football before than now. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, before, I, I I feel like before it was normal that you trained before your training. And, like, I think today's kids, are they are just training, like, team training, and they think that this is enough. Mm -hmm. But, like, back in the days, you were playing in school, then you were coming one hour before session to 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 train, to play with the, with the, with the other kids. Then you were training, and then after training, you were also playing with the kids. And then later, when you mm. were at, at home, you were also juggling the ball and playing around the, the furniture. So, like, mm. uh, I feel like the coaches lacks to encourage players to play more football. A hundred percent. And I, you probably know, Kachi, like, kids are doing, like, five one-to-one -one sessions. Um, they're not playing street football anymore. Um, people are like kids are not outdoorsy these days, um, which it's it's crazy, isn't it? Because I feel like it's a vicious cycle, isn't it? Like you have a generation where they play a lot, and then you have a generation that doesn't play a lot and do a lot of training, and then they get found out, and then it will be like that, wouldn't it? Like, can you think of any other bad decision that you did, um, that you changed that affected your future? Yeah, bro. The, the main one was not training physically. I mm. never did push-ups, never did sit-ups, bro. I was always cheating. Anytime the coach was looking away, I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> rest, okay. Looking, okay, okay. Push-ups, push-ups, push-ups. And then again, yeah. he's not looking, okay. Rest, rest, rest. Bro, this was the, the worst unconscious decision. I I needed, like, I feel like I needed somebody to tell me, bro, you cannot do that. Just just mm. do the push-ups. You will thank, thank me later. So yeah, so I would say not training, uh, not training physically. And what about you? Mine is technically because I came into this country when I was like nine, nine ten. So I didn't know any better, but well, I was just the African kid that was athletic. But do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I didn't do any of this technical training, ball, wall. When yeah, you know, when people start at the age of like three, four years old, no, nah, I started like nine, ten, but like I started so late. But because I was tall and athletic, that's the only thing I could depend on. So I didn't know any better. Um, and like you said before, twelve, it's, it's your parents that teach you that type of stuff, or like they guide you about that, or mm, the dads played football in the past, so he really knows what needs to be. But I didn't have that, so um, I didn't know it any better. Um. So that's one thing I would have done better because as I got older, I got taller and taller. So if you already started with no ball control and then you get taller, you lose body control as well. Mm -hmm. So you, your lack of balance, your your body doesn't have any um reference of where you should be. You've got long arms, long legs, and you're like, You've got no ball control and you've got no body control, but it looks like a mess. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I ended up like, funny enough, I don't, I don't think you know this. I started playing right wing when I was young. Jesus. I was never a defender. <laughs> yeah. So I was just, I used to just hit the ball into space and I used to win. Hit the ball like a, like an NFL wide receiver, like I, but I was just running like NFL, and then I put it in the box or whatever, 
Um, so that's, but then I realised I can't do that anymore because people are catching up to me. And then that's when I move more to defence, 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 defence. I didn't have the technical ability. Um, but obviously, as I got older, that's changed. Um, but yeah, definitely. What about from 16 onwards, what would you say? What's the bad decision that you made? Uh, 16 onwards. Uh, 16 onwards, yeah. That's that's actually surprisingly weird one. But has think too many football shoes. So like I was the guy that I was playing playing in Pumas, Adidas, Nike, every single shoe on the planet. And as you know, like shoes are one of the most that that's your most important tool in football. And bro, many times I was having blisters and I couldn't train for a week. Or other times I the shoes were too small and I couldn't even train because I didn't have shoes. I couldn't have afford to buy new shoes. So like find out what's your model, what's your uh, signature shoe as soon as possible. That's like a weird one, but that, that's an advice from me. And there's a shop in the UK where you, you do it, like you put your foot on a scanner and it tells you and then it gives you a suggestion. Mm. That's the one thing I wish I did, right? Yeah. Because coming from my African background, yeah. Your mum always gets you a few. That's one size or two sizes bigger than. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so Just put on extra socks. Yeah, yeah, you'll grow into it. You'll grow into it. Blah blah. blah. Yeah. But you only get like one shoe or like one shoe a year or whatever. I'm like, I can't. But then I got to a point where I thought that was normal. That makes sense. Having big shoes, mm-hmm. so I'm running man a pitch with bare creases on my boots, bro. I have bare creases, bro. And then on the clock, this I'm thinking every time I'm changing direction, like, it's, like I feel like I'm slipping and sliding in my shoe, and I used to get blisters. And I'm thinking that makes sense, this. And then even when I got like grip socks, same thing. I was still getting blisters. I'm thinking this doesn't make sense. And then uh, I only started clocking when I was at what twenty twenty one. That's when I got told. And one of the lads, you probably know him, Odoyan, looks at my shoe, he goes, why is there so much gap in your toes? I'm thinking, I like to spread my toes in it. And he goes, nah, 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 nah. He feels my shoes, he goes, nah, nah. But at the time, because you questioned him, he was like, how are you wearing bigger shoes than me? And I'm taller than you. I'm like, I've got black feet in it, blah, 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 whatever. But it turns out I was wearing size 12 when I'm, when I was a size 10 all my life. But when I went to size 10, my feet was hurting, bro. My feet was hurting, bro. Mm. And, like, and then Odoni was like, yeah, that's what you need to go through. If you're really struggling, put it in a, um, in a hot bath, read it in a hot bath. And I'm like, what's this guy talking? They watched him Ronaldo, hot bath thing. I like, say less, put it in a hot bath, bro. My boot felt like a glove. But ever since then, I've never looked back. My touch has been clean. I'm thinking at the age of 21, I'm on the clock. Mm. But that's because I didn't know any better. Do you know what I mean? And then that's when I, and then, oh, bro. Oh, bro. That's when my process started to get better. That's when my passes, my touches, bro. Yeah. Because if you're swearing two, two sides up and you double suck every time, but you can't feel your touch more. But I thought that's how much space you meant to have. Do you know what I mean? Like, as if you're wearing, like, I don't know, like, Jordans or something. Like, I feel like, oh, it's comfortable, blah, blah, blah. But then when you start to, like, see and like, footballers, they go, going, oh, yeah, do you know your best friend's few shots? They go, yeah. Designers, he wears size eight, but on boots, he wears seven, um, seven or seven point five. I'm thinking, so they go smaller and boots, but I didn't know that, bro. I don't. I never knew that. Okay. There is like one uh, quote that I I don't remember fully. I will probably mess it up. But it's about like if you want to walk a mile, first thing you need to make sure that, that there is no rocks in your socks, something like that. So like mm. the, that's the importance of the of the shoe shoeer that you have. Mm. So like mm. uh, 
you if you go forward you should focus on going forward not about if your shoes fit or not or blisters are pain pain in my mm. my feet uh, it's too tight now like like i would say it in a way that uh, if you play football and you feel like you could do do it better barefoot or like uh, in the socks rather than in the shoes you have a wrong footwear 100% and another thing is like recognize the type of footwear each brand has so adidas they tend to be more for people who have narrow feet and then for like puma and sometimes nike they're more for wide feet players so just recognize like which one is what like as i said like i can't i can't remember which company does it in the uk where you do a foot scanner and it just gives you like the best shoe that's best for you um, so that's really important, I, yeah. I would say, is recognize your foot type, or your right foot, narrow foot, and then recognize um what's best like um, what's best for you in terms of like what gives you comfort, what gives you, what, what makes you feel the touch of the ball. Uh, those are really important as well, and the importance of having different. This is my stupid. This is another thing I used to do. Recognizing the importance of having different um type of boots for them for like for example soft ground, firm ground, artificial mm. ground, stuff like that. So important, but like there's one time but like I this is when I was a kid again. I was like, well I wouldn't say a kid, like sixteen. I wore metal studs <laughs> in artificial oh. ground. Or well, the coach went, Do you wanna break your ACL? I'm thinking, what are you talking about? Boots and boots. They're like, no, let me teach you. And there's that on the studs, the metal studs are this big. On the on the on the firm ground, they're like this big. And then the artificial ground, they're this big. I'm like, oh, that's why I can't be stuck to the ground. I can't move when I'm changing direction. Because yeah, that's why. So if you get stuck and then somebody um tackles you, you're gonna break your knee, you're gonna break your ankle. And it's crazy. But I didn't I never knew that until seen it happen in real life I, I was watching my, my like my my school friend like an old friend playing Sunday league we were playing like a studs in Fiji bro ruptured the ACL ruptured his meniscus yeah and his patella came off the ball as well oh. all in one go bro bro three years he's been doing rehab he's still, he's still not walking the same he walks with a limp Jeez. When I seen that, oh, I've never heard someone screaming pain that much in my life. He was screaming and screaming. I'm thinking, yep, yeah, I'm so glad I got that left in last younger. Oh, oh, shit. That's what I mean. It's like recognising different terms. But mm. I think for people that are in a modern country, it's it's common sense. But for, for kids are more in a less privileged country or they don't have the um the money or the facility to understand that that aspect of having three pair of boots or whatever then they, they don't know that knowledge so really important. Mm, but that's the thing like it's necessary to understand that so it's not like oh yeah but i cannot afford it mm. bro if you really want to be professional you have to fix it you have to find mm. the money. You have to somehow organize uh, different pairs of shoes. Like imagine there are kids in your age in academy, academy that they have everything and you are competing with them with your uh, shoes with holes. Mm. Ah, get your shit together, bro. 100%, 100%. Well, about uh, older into the game, what's the one thing that you wish you did differently? Hmm. Huh. I can think one. Recognizing when you need patience and when you feel like you've overstayed your welcome in a team. That is so important. Mm. And that's the one thing that I struggle to get the balance. There's one there's been times where I've stayed with a team one whole year and I think I got like what? I came off the bench about five times. One minute here, ten minutes there, blah, blah, blah. In the whole season, bro. And there's been times where in the whole season, I've been bouncing teams. 
So, um, and then the teams that I've left, I'm probably their main right back is injured, and then they had to get another right back. I'm thinking, oh, that could have been me there, blah blah. So again, recognizing, um, when you've overstayed your welcome, and when you've um, you need just you need to just sit down, and have patience. I would add for myself that uh, calm down your ambition. Like uh, many times we hear about the 16-year-old, 17-year-olds playing in Barcelona, City, Arsenal. But bro, this, this kids has been uh, in academy since uh, four or five-year-old. So like mm. for the most of the players, the, the pathway should be that they start in some Sunday league team at the age of 16. Like, like as soon mm. as possible, I would recommend. But let's say 16. And then even if you if you play uh, let's say in uh, in Norwegian term, okay? Let's say you play division six when you are 16. Bro, you mm. have five years to get to the top league. Then you are mm. at 21 playing in top league if you if you go up every year. Five mm. years, 21, bound play good one season in Norwegian first division, go abroad. Mm, so uh, yeah, calm down your, your ambition. Yeah, try play um, senior football as soon as possible. That's what I would say. Mm. Like, even if you don't play that much minutes that season, but you're playing and training men's football week in, week out for a year, you're going to be a change player, 100%. Uh, what would you recommend to a, let's say, Polish player that he was always dreaming about playing in Liverpool Academy? Would you recommend him? How... Yeah, let's say a 16 year old. He was thinking, oh, it would be so cool to play in Liverpool Academy. Let's say he even gets an offer. Would you rather him to play in Liverpool Academy at the age of 16 or to play in senior football? Let's say Division 4 in Poland. Um, at the age of 16, in my opinion, um, it dep- at 16, 16 to 18 in the UK scholarship years. So nothing really happens much in the scholarship year, I'll be honest, for the majority anyway. Um, Can you just elab- elaborate what the scholarship is? For some so scholarship know. years is basically um, is the years where you live with the club, if that makes sense. If you're already living in Liverpool, then you don't even need to live with the club, do you know what I mean? So it's basically because from, let's say, 12 to 13, 16, you're only training like three times a week and then you play a game on the weekend. We had a scholarship years and then obviously you go to secondary school, whatever. Scholarship years is basically you leave high school and then you get given education in the academy, like a scholar, academic scholar. But yeah, so you're you're doing you're doing basically like a, I don't know, um sports exercise diploma or you're doing coaching or some conditioning course, whatever, alongside playing football every day. So you're going from part time to full time. But that makes sense with a bit mm. of background of education. So in essence, they're just trying to give you that um that foundation of like a bit a bit of education and get you two years of you getting you used to playing full time football. And that is normally with the under eighteens. And if you really look good at sixteen, then you get pushed up to under twenty threes. Normally when you get put pushed up to under twenty three, you don't get given a scholarship. You normally get given a full time contract, a pro contract. So scholarship years, you only get given like let's say it's like pocket money, if that makes sense. Pocket money, and then you get given everything for free: kit, boots, and um, GPS, nutrition, supplements, and um, sometimes even meal preps, and um, all of these kind of stuff for free because you're on scholarship. And then they give you a bit of pocket money, and that's about it, right? That's what scholarship is. And that's between 16 to 18. Then 16 to 18, 18 and upwards, they, we, they have this what's called um, a decision-making phase between May, June before July comes. 
and they decide, okay, are we going to give you a contract or we're going to release you? I'd say 85, 90% of the squad will get released. Hmm. Been there, do you know what I mean? So, the other, they will get a, um, a one-year contract. If they really like you, they give you a two-year contract. And if they really, 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 really like you, they'll give you a pro contract after the first year of scholarship. And normally scholarship is two years. So they'll just cancel the scholarship and just give you a pro. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Obviously, you're still attending school, blah, blah, to finish your diploma, blah, blah. But that's only like two, three times a week. In the afternoon, two, three hours. That's it. Um, so that's how it works in the UK. Um. So, if you're playing a numbers game, there's so many hurdles that you need to go through. And normally, when you get given a pro contract, if the team really likes you, they will chip you up on loan. Either to League One, Championship, or Scotland, or Ireland, whatever it may be, or even abroad, to play one season or two season full-time football. Oh, that's your that's your assessment period. If you do really good, you got your they're gonna keep extending that contract one year, one year, one year, keep extending it. And that's why they can put a clause. Okay, if I get this amount of minutes in the first team, then it will um activate the clause to extend the contract. So normally, when they give you the one year deal, they say one year deal plus one. So the mm. plus one is dependent on your performances and how many minutes you get. And it depends on the club situation, obviously. If they have a lot of injuries, then they'll extend it. Quickly. And they normally keep the, the contract in terms of pay and stuff like that the same. Um, so that's how it works there. Now, in terms of like the odds of you making a pro from a Liverpool Academy, it's low, very low. Um, and the retention rate of them keeping place is very low. That's generally speaking. This season in Liverpool, it's a bit different. They've played the highest amount of young players this season compared to the last 10 years. Mm. Um, but from a general consensus, the success rate is super, super low. And it's the success rate even super low getting into academy in the first place. Um. So that's what I would say, and that's how academy in the UK works. I'm probably the same in the top five leagues in Europe, anyway. Um, I don't know how it works in Poland, um, but in terms of what I would say is go where the limelight is, if that makes sense. Academy football, there's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of limelight. First team football, there is. Um, especially if you're 16 playing first team football. Because mm. um, if you're 16 and there's 40 games, but you score 10 goals, you're getting scouted. I don't care. 100%. Um, if you're 16 and you're keeping clean sheets and you're playing left and the back four, you're okay. getting scouted. Do you know what I mean? Because you're a boy in a man's body type of thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Um, so in essence, go where you're closest, closest to the sun, if that makes sense. So if, if you know there's more steps uh, and there's more uh, harder obstacle to get to playing first team football in Liverpool, compared to playing first in football and Polish fourth div and then climb up and climb up and climb up and climb up and climb up. I'd rather you do the Polish fourth div because you're going to get scouted based on value and the value and the merit that you're going to get is only be going to be based on experience. Now, in terms of by the time you hit 18 and you got on loan, blah, 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 you would have, you could have played two years men's football. See what I mean? So, you've got a yet yeah, the standard intensity might be different, a hundred percent, right? But as a man, 
you don't stop developing up until you're 23. So you've got from 16 to 23 to kind of max out as much minutes in the senior football as much as possible. And then only then you're going to be valued as a man. You're going to be seen as a man from 23 onwards. And then you peak between 25 up until 34. That's where you peak. Actually, that's where you peak career. Before it used to be up to 30, but nowadays, I would extend their career to going to 34. So that's my advice in terms of what I would do. Um, you got judged based on merit and merit you only gain experience and the main thing that you, you get judged on in terms of your football career is senior football not kids football true yeah true like uh, I hate it when uh, sometimes you can read that uh, oh this player 15 year old scored 129 goals in 23 games in academy bro who cares <laughs> Oh, the amount of academy kids that I know, that I was like, yo, this kid is cold, this kid is crazy. Oh, but, but not even, not even like, he was like, he was under 16 playing for the under 18, 19s, then as soon as he got into 23s, he, he was still like showing his capabilities. And then he, that's when they put him out on loan for like Championship League One, League Two, where this nitty gritty, Long balls, mm. um, cold, rainy night in Stoke. You know what I mean? And it's hailing, raining, windy. The guy goes missing. The amount mm. of kids I know that I'd be like, oh, the next Steven Gerrard, oh, the next Sammy Hippier, oh, the next this, this, this. Bro, they've gone missing, bro. On more time, it's so sad. Like when you catch them in the streets, they're doing bricklaying or construction or they're just a plumber or they're in a white van then an electrician and in a good like a good hard end to living and I'm like you used to be the next big thing mm -hmm. I just, just couldn't handle it in football so um, that's my advice I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. I would put football in two, two ways. Tiki-taka or long ball? I think you need to master both. I think if you want to be a really top player, you need to be able to play out from the... Let's say as a centre-back. To play out from the back, but also to play long ball. You need to be able to play those two styles. So like I, t I see too many kids being able to either play tiki-taka and like bam, 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 academy football, but then you go to senior football, you get crushed. You just get destroyed. You get sandwiched. And then sometimes you also see like uh, kids from uh, from like small uh, villages where they all they teach in, in those small academies is just kick it to striker and run. And then they come up to, to Tiki Taka and they, they just get complex. They see how much better everyone else is done themselves. So, uh, yeah, master those two styles, Tiki Taka and Long Bulls. Yeah, um, I 100% agree. Um, I remember the manager when I forget the fancy academy football. But it's to win. And I'm thinking, huh? You guys, this sideways, sideways passes, bounce passes, blah, cut it off, play direct, trying to win a game, got three points. Just what I mean, academy, up until 16, you don't play in the league, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Apart from cup games, you don't really play in the league, right? So, I'm like, oh, I'll play for three points, bro. Bro, that whole dynamic changes, bro. When you're playing for three points, you're going to get three points, regardless of how sexy or how beautiful your football is. Mm. You're there to win three points. Bro, that, that's what I mean. If, if 16 year old kids can get that mentality in their head from such a young age. Yeah. And 
realise you don't have to play fancy football. Sometimes you have to go long. Sometimes you have to. You need to learn how to calm down the game or whatever. But they're gonna go above and beyond. Um, that's one thing I I had to learn in a hard way. Mm. A lot of like like they tell me, oh stop stop backing out of tackles, blah, blah. especially in non-league, bro. When you see two foot two foot tackles. Blah, blah blah, and I'm trying to flip the ball over uh, over him or something like that, or I'm jumping over him and he's winning the ball. And I'm like, bloody, I'm gonna break my ankle here. And then the manager screaming at me, "Don't back out of a tackle, bro. two foot in back." I'm thinking, yo, this is crazy. But like, I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like seventeen, like I'm like, what two foot? I'm to two foot grown ass men. What did it? Do you know what I mean? Um. So little little thing like that goes a long way, hundred percent. Mm. I would also say, be smart with how you play. So what I mean by that is, uh, don't get injured. Like many times when you play fancy football, especially in the senior team, bro, you will you will you will see you will see the guy coming behind the shoulder. Yeah, you will gonna... see him, bro. You will see him five seconds, uh, five milliseconds before he does that, and he will be then screaming later from the hospital. Yeah, yeah, bro. Be smart. Be smart. Uh, how you play? And it's little things where dark arts of football. You never learn that in academy. You learn in the first team football. Bro, the stuff that I'm seeing, bro. Oh my days, bro. Like shit, pulling, pinching, grabbing, bro, like little thing, like grabbing the balls. And I'm like, oh, yo, what are you doing? And they be like, and then next minute, bro, I got the balls over my head, bro. He's one ahead, hits the post, and the manager screaming. And I'm like, bro, you just touched my. I'm like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't care. Switch on. I'm thinking. And the next minute is pinching me, pulling my shirt. I'm thinking, what's going on? But uh, the next corner kick comes in and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. goes, like, you're having a good day. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing later? You're you watching the boxing fights. And I'm like, I should shut up. I'm, I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bang, stamps on my foot. I'm like, that's another head there, bro. You can see the goal. I'm thinking, yo, what's going on? I'm getting head loss, bro. Like absolute head loss, bro. Uh, but little things, and you're trying to defend, and then the 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 blocking your run, and you're trying to def- uh, dark arts of football goes a long way, bro. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, bro. That's a topic for next podcast. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.